All right, uh, we're talking about Unidroit today. Uh, Unidroit stands for the International Institution uh, for the Unification of Private Law. Uh, all courts in Canada, United States, United, are United Nations courts under the Unidroit Treaty and have been for over 30 years. All courts are de facto court. There's no authority to delegate anything to the United Nations in the Constitution for the United States of America or the British North America Act. Unidroit stands for the Unification of Private Law. And the website says the 63 countries have adopted it. It's designed to be automatically implemented. Canada and United States have been signatories for over 30 years. Unidroid set website says nothing about Texas or Arizona, any of the American states, or the Canadian provinces. Therefore, Unidroid applications to the American states and the Canadian provinces is only in federal areas. Unidroid covers negotiable instruments, civil procedures, secured transactions, legal status of women, maintenance obligations, contracts, banking law, and much more. This is their website. We're going to go in a little bit closer. This is closer. It talks about contracts, cultural property, franchising. And this is the next page, and then we'll go in a little closer. Leasing, security interest, transports, banking law, capital markets, banking law, whoops, civil procedure, contracts, cultural property, franchising, hotel keepers, insurance, intellectual property, legal uh, leasing, legal status of women, maintenance obligations, movement of persons, negotiable instruments. Okay, so... Um, I mean, that covers a lot of stuff. Uh, Unidroit covers mandatory insurance for motor vehicles, uh, anything related to marriage, divorce, and children. Uh, this is um, another page. Uh, it's an International Institute for the Unification of Private Law. It talks about the 1955 Benelux Treaty on Compulsory Insurance Against Civil Liability in Respect to Motor Vehicles. Uh, it talks about the 1958 Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Decisions Relating to Maintenance Obligations Towards Children and 1959 European Convention on Compulsory Insurance Against Civil Liability in Respect of Motor Vehicles. This is their website, shows the member countries. Uh, Australia, Canada are the ones that are marked there. Uh, uh, United Kingdom and the U.S. are marked there. Uh, Texas is not listed. Arizona is not listed. There's no American state listed. Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario is not listed. No Canadian province. Anything involving more vehicles or the courts is both commercial and federal, and they have, and, and therefore they have to get you into one of their unconstitutional law merchant contracts. Anything in America, uh, state or federal, uh, or any Unidroid country involving motor vehicles or the courts or the banks or finance falls under Unidroid. This is uh, UCC section 1-201. Action in sense of a, a judicial proceeding includes recoupment, counterclaim, set-off, suit and equity, or any other proceeding in which rights are determined. In other words, any court case is falls under Unidroid. Um, this is uh, the public law, uh, 88-244, um, and uh, 77 stat 630 and 631, an act to enact the Uniform Commercial Code for the District of Columbia and for other purposes. And so the Uniform Commercial Code exists only in the District of Columbia. If it's in Texas, and Texas is called a Texas Business and Commerce Code, but it only applies in federal areas of Texas. Um, a citizen of the United States is a citizen of the District of Columbia. Uh, uh, this is UCC 9.307H. The United States is located in the District of Columbia. Uh, there's been created a fictional federal state of XXX within a state. This is Schwartz versus O'Hara Township School District, uh, citing a U.S. Supreme Court case. This is Texas Tax Code. Um, talks about in this state means within the exterior limits of Texas, includes all territory within these limits ceded to or owned by the United States. And what they're saying is when any of this, when this phrase in this state is used in Texas statutes, that it only applies in federal areas of Texas. That statute that they're talking about only applies in federal areas of Texas. Um, this is Bond versus United States. This is last summer, last August. Uh, but Madison insisted that just because this power is given to Congress, it did not follow the treaty power as absolute and unlimited. The President and Senate lacked the power to dismember the empire, for example, because the exercise of the power must be consistent with the object of the delegation. The object of treaties and Madison's oft-repeated formulation is the regulation of intercourse with foreign nations and is external. Okay, so they have no business using Unidroid inside America. This is uh, the Gold Reserve Act of 1934, found at Book 48 of the Statutes at Large, page 337. Section 15 is used in this act. The term United States means the government of the United States. The term currency of the United States means currency, which is legal tender in the United States and includes United States notes and Federal Reserve notes. 
So what they're saying is United States notes and Federal Reserve notes are meant for internal government use only. Section 16, the right to alter, amend, or repeal this act is hereby expressly reserved. In other words, they can never change it. Section 17, all acts and parts of acts inconsistent with any provision of this act is hereby repealed. In other words, that is it. As long as the United States exists, that's the law. Uh, Federal Reserve notes are meant for internal government use only. They're meant for commercial government employees only. It's a negotiable instrument. falls under Unidroit. It's a security under the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966. It's a bill of credit. It said notes shall be obligations of the United States. Anything purchased with the Federal Reserve notes is purchased on United States credit. Well, think about it. Who owns it? United States owns it. This is uh, that same court case. This last summer, Bond versus United States, today it is enough to highlight some of the structural and historical evidence suggesting that tree power can be used to arrange intercourse with other nations, but not to regulate purely domestic affairs. Um, and that actually, that Bond versus United States actually cites this case, Mayor of New Orleans versus United States. The government of the United States is one of limited powers. It can exercise authority over no subjects except those which have been delegated to it. Congress cannot, by legislation, enlarge the federal jurisdiction, nor can it be enlarged under the treaty-making power. And that's uh, Mayor of New Orleans versus United States, found at 10 Peters uh, 662. That's like 1824. Uh, anyways, the Federal Tax Lien Act. For the purposes of this section, security interest, the, the term uh, security interest means any interest in property acquired by contract for the purpose of securing payment or performance of an obligation or indemnifying against loss of, or liability. Um, a, paragraph A, if at um, uh, any time the property is in existence, the interest uh, has become protected under local law against a subsequent judgment lien arising and the unsecured uh, obligation, and B, to the extent that such time the holder has parted with money or money's worth. Okay, notice they say money's worth because there is no money. Um, anyways, it goes on in uh, paragraphs 3 and 4, it says 3, the term motor vehicle means a self-propelled vehicle which is registered for highways use under the laws of any state or foreign country. Okay, so that's under the Federal Tax Lien Act. And um, and uh, so then that's where they get this. Uh, if your vehicle's registered, then they turn, they assume it's one of their, uh, you're one of their slaves. Uh, uh, paragraph 4, security. The term security means any bond, debenture, note, as in Federal Reserve note, or certificate or other evidence of indebtedness. Okay, again, gee, that sounds like a Federal Reserve note. Issued by a corporation or, or a government or political subdivision thereof. Well, a corporation is called the Federal Reserve. Uh, government is uh, United States. Um, anyways, uh, negotiable instrument or money, okay, that all falls under uh, Federal Reserve notes. A mixed war is one made one side by public authority and the other by mere private persons. They're engaging in commercial warfare on you uh, with their fictitious name, their nom de guerre. Under international law of warfare, all parties must appear uh, by nom de guerre because an alien enemy cannot maintain an action during the war in his own name. Um, if any citizen, uh, this is found in 26 United States Code, Section 7701, 39, uh, if any citizen or resident of the United States does not reside in and is not found in any United States judicial district, such citizen or resident shall be treated as residing in the District of Columbia for purposes of any provisions of this title to jurisdiction of the courts or enforcement of summons. Okay, so if you're a U.S. citizen, then you are you get an Article I court. You're treated as if you're in the District of Columbia, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. This is a U.S. Supreme Court case, 1948, National Mutual Insurance Company of District of Columbia versus Tidewater Transfer Company. We therefore hold to decline to overrule the opinion of Chief Justice Marshall. We hold that the District of Columbia is not a state within Article Three of the Constitution. In other words, cases between citizens of the district and those of the states were not included in the catalog of controversies over which the Congress could give jurisdiction to the federal courts by virtue of Article Three. In other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over the citizens of Washington District of Columbia and through their plenary power, okay, read that military dictatorship nationally covers both those citizens even when in one of the several states as though the district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. And so... Um, that's actually citing an 1804 U.S. Supreme Court case. Um, 
Then there is the act to terminate certain authorities with respect to national emergencies still in effect and to provide for orderly implementation and termination of future natural emergencies, which was approved uh, on September 14, 1976. And you can find that at Book 90 of the Statutes at Large, page 1255. And uh, this is called the National Emergency Act. In the Section 502, it says the provisions of this act shall not apply to the following provisions of law, the authorities and powers uh, conferred by and actions taken thereunder. And it's, it goes to Section 5B of the Act of October 6, 1917. That's the Trading with the Enemy Act. That's what made U.S. citizens enemies of the state. So, so this National Emergency Act does not apply to making U.S. citizens enemies of the state. U.S. citizens are still enemies of the state, and they're still making war on U.S. citizens. Um, the term motor vehicle means every description of carriage or other contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes on the highways and the transportation of passengers, passengers and property, or property or cargo. The term used for commercial purposes means the carriage of persons or property for any fee rate, charge, or other consideration directly in connection uh, in, with any business or other undertaking intended for profit. So if you go to the Federal Tax Lien Act, that means that they can steal your property, but they can't go after you criminally uh, based on it, based on this uh, Title 18, which is the Criminal Code, uh, Section 31. Um, uh, this is Juilliard versus Greenman. Uh, there's no such thing as the power of inherent sovereignty in the government of the United States. In this country, sovereignty resides in the people, and can, Congress can exercise no power, which they have not, by their Constitution, entrusted to it. Okay, so the Constitution is a trust indenture. It's not a corporation. The, it's a trust indenture. It creates a trust. Governments are but trustees acting under derived authority and have no power to delegate what's not delegated to them. And so... The uh, um, the constitution's a trust, and the and and we the people delegated authority to the government, and this is another U.S. Supreme Court case, Luther versus Borden. Um, this is uh, Mayor of New Orleans versus United States. The government of the United States is one of limited powers; it can exercise authority over no subjects except those which have been delegated to it, and nor can it be enlarged under the treaty-making power. Um, a delegate, this is maxims of law now. A delegate cannot delegate. An agent cannot delegate his functions to a sub-agent without the knowledge or consent of the principal. The person uh, to whom an officer duty is delegated cannot lawfully devolve the duty on another unless he be expressly authorized to do so. Un expressly authorized. It's got to be there. A delegate cannot uh, begin, a delegated power cannot be again delegated. A deputy cannot have or appoint a deputy. Uh, and and uh, if you go to Title 28, United States Code, Section 3002, it says the United States is a federal corporation. Well, there's no authority for a federal corporation. There's no authority. Where's the authority? Where does it say that in the Constitution? It doesn't say a word about a corporation. The Constitution's a trust indenture. And so uh, uh, this corporation was set up in 1871. There's no authority for that. There's no authority for the Department of the Treasury. There's no authority for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. There's no authority for the Department of Homeland Security. There's no authority for the Secret Service. There's no authority for Immigration and Customs Enforcement. There's no authority for United States Border Patrol. There's no authority for Office of Attorney General. There's no authority for Internal Revenue Service. There's no authority for a Federal Reserve. There's no authority for the United States District Court for the Northern District of Texas. There's no authority for the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit. There's no authority for the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York or the Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit or the, court, or the District Court for the District of Arizona. There's no authority for the uh, uh, Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. They're all ultra vires, an act performed by any authority or to act on a subject uh, the term has broad application and includes not only acts prohibited by the Charter, but acts which are in excess of powers granted and not prohibited and generally applied, whether uh, either when the corporation has no power uh, whatever to do an act. Act is ultra vires when a corporation is without authority to perform it under any circumstances or for any purpose. Ultra vires act of municipality is one which is beyond powers conferred upon it by law. And that's uh, Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition. So they have no authority. Filing fees, licenses, contracts, okay? This is uh, 
uh, a license is a contract, a right given by someone in conflict authority to do that, without which such authority would be illegal. An instrument or writing which secures this right is also called a license. A license is expressed or implied. An express license is one which in direct terms authorizes the performance of a certain act. Um, an implied license is one, though not expressly given, may be presumed by the acts of the party having the right to give it. In other words, filing fees is an excise tax. And uh, it's a license. Okay, license and taxes work together. And that's what this case talks about. U.S. Supreme Court license tax cases. The requirement of the payment for such license is only a mode of imposing taxes on the licensed business. And so it's all for businesses. And the prohibition under penalties against carrying on the business without license is only mode of enforcing payment of such taxes. The recognition uh, by the acts of Congress of the power and right of the states to tax and control or regulate any business uh, is entirely consistent with the intent on the part of Congress to tax such a business for li uh, national purposes. So, again, licenses and taxes work together, and a filing fee is an excise tax for the ex implied license of proceeding in the so-called court. Um, now, uh, this is uh, Thompson versus Smith. Uh, you have, when acting to enforce a statute and subsequent amendments to the present date, the judges of a municipal court is acting as an administrative officer, not in a judicial capacity. Courts administrating or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely as, act as an extension, as an agent for the involved agency. Okay, so think about it. United Nations, uh, uh, all these statutes are United Nations statutes, and it's these clerks, these clerks masquerading as judges, are, are uh, and that's why I say that they're United Nations clerks masquerading as judges, because, because they're, they're not judges, they're clerks masquerading as judges. Judges who become involved in enforcement of mere statutes act as mere clerks of the involved agency, it is the accepted rule, not only state courts, but of federal courts as well, that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they're described as mere extensions of the agency for superior reviewing purposes. In other words, it's a kangaroo court. It's prejudged from the beginning and uh, has nothing to do with justice. A judge is incompetent. A clerks are incompetent to do judicial acts. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessary nullities. In other words, if they issue a bench warrant, it's a nullity. It doesn't exist. It's a fraud. And, uh, and, and that's exactly the truth. They have no immunity. Judges loses his absolute immunity from damage actions, although you have to get their judge buddies to help you out with that. And good luck with that. Where any state proceeds against a private individual in a judicial form, as well settle a state, county, municipality, etc., waives any immunity to counters, cross claims, complaints by direct or collateral means regarding the matters involved. When enforcing mere statutes, judges of all courts do not act judicially and thus are not protected by qualified or limited immunity. They do not have immunity. Officers of the court have no immunity for when violating a constitutional right for their deemed to know the law. An officer who acts in violation of the Constitution ceases to represent the government. In other words, they're not even representing the government. Okay? Again, it's a commercial transaction. It's a kangaroo court. And this is all because of Unidroid. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Uh, ignorance of the law does not excuse misconduct of anyone, least of all a sworn officer of the law. It is a fundamental maxim of common law that ignorance of the law excuses no one. Imposters, those who falsely pretend an extraordinary commission from heaven or terrify and abuse the people with false denunciations of judgment. Um, an imposter, one who pretends to be someone else to deceive others, especially to receive the benefits of a negotiable instrument. And, and that's what they are. Judges, these clerks masquerading as judges are impersonating a judge is what they're doing. A person commits an offense if he impersonates a public uh, servant to induce the another to submit to his pretended official authority or to rely on his pretended official acts. Knowingly purports to exercise any function of a public servant or public office, including that of a judge in court. And, um, and that's, in, that's uh, Texas Penal Code. So when these, when these clerks masquerading as judges... It's not a judge. It's a clerk masquerading as judge. It's not neutral or detached. It's a commercial transaction under the Satanic Uniform Commercial Code. And uh, this is a, a, a Ward versus Village of Monroe Supreme Court case. 
as it's a fundamental right of a party to have a neutral and detached judge preside over neutral uh, judicial proceedings. So it's a void judgment, whatever it is. I don't care what they do. It's a nothing. Where there is no jurisdiction, there's no judge. The proceeding is as nothing such has been the law from the days of Marshall Sayah. And uh, a void judgment is one which has no legal force or effect, whatever. It's an absolute nullity. Its invalidity may be asserted by any person whose rights are affected at any time in any place. It may not... It need not be attacked directly. It may be attacked collaterally uh, uh, whenever and wherever it's interposed. A void order may be attacked either directly or collaterally at any time. A void judgment is one which from inception is and forever continues to be absolutely null without legal efficacy, ineffectual to bind parties to support a right of no legal force and effect, whatever, incapable of enforcement any matter to any degree. And these are actually, these next cases are English court cases, so this is not unique to American law. A void order results from a fundamental defect in proceedings or from a without jurisdiction ultra vires act of a public body or judicial office holder. Uh, a without jurisdiction ultra vires act is an act which a court did not have to do. A void order is incurably void in all proceedings based on an invalid claim or void act or also void. Even a decision of the higher courts will be void if the decision is founded on an invalid claim or void act because something cannot be founded on nothing. Uh, the courts masquerading as judges are conspiring with bar members for the agency involved to violate your rights under the color of law, and this is all unidroid, okay? Color of law, mere semblance of a legal right, an action done under color of law is one done with apparent authority of law, but actually in contravention of the law. And that's found in Barron's Canadian Law Dictionary, 6th edition. Color of law means the appearance or semblance without the substance of legal right, misuse of power, possessed by virtue of state law, and made possible only because wrongdoing is closed with authority of state action is action taken on a color of law. Color of law, color of officie, is when an act is evilly done by the countenance of an office, is always taken in the worst sense, be uh, grounded upon corruption to which the office is a shadow and a color. And that's Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835. Color signifies a probable plea, but which is in effect false. Okay, so and I've seen them course case court cases dismissed because they weren't colorable enough. In other words, they didn't have enough fraud in them. Um, color means an appearance, a semblance, a simulacrum, as distinguished from that which is real, a prima facie or apparent right. Hence, a deceptive appearance, a plausible assumed exterior, concealing a lack of reality, a disguise or a ple pretext. Everything they do is a fraud. Colorable, presenting an appearance that does not correspond with reality, an appearance intended to conceal or deceive. And that's Barron's Canadian Law Dictionary. Color of office is when an act is evilly done by the countenance of an office, always taken in the worst sense, being grounded upon corruption to which the office is a shadow and a color. Judges can be Article 3 or Article 1. Once they fabricate evidence of the U.S. Citizen Slave Corporation, they go to Article 1, Administrative Law. Administrative law is plenary, arbitrary dictatorship. Under their admiralty they, law, they collect a royalty. They do everything they can to convert it over to administrative law so they can collect their royalty. Most judges retire millionaires. All state courts are actually federal courts with bar members and U.S. citizens as officers of the court. The Uniform Commercial Code is unconstitutional because the Unidroid Treaty is unconstitutional. It is unconstitutional for them to use anything under the Uniform Commercial Code against any living soul in America. There is no lawful delegation of authority for the United States Corporation that is currently masquerading as the government of the United States of America or any of its agencies. There is no lawful delegation of authority for the federal municipal corporation called State of Texas, Inc., or a subsidiary called Judiciary Courts of the State of Texas, Inc., and they're all pirates engaged in treason and sedition, and they're all, uh, all prisoners are prisoners of war, okay? So and anybody that's in jail is a prisoner of war. And this is actually... A, if you look here, it's an affidavit by Daniel Lee Swank, okay? And it's recorded with the Liberty County Recorder. And um, uh, looks like a date here is uh, 6th of June, 2008. And uh, it's notarized. And uh, so this is an affidavit. He, says he received the attached two pages. Uh, let's go down here and get it up bigger. Uh, it's, I um, personal knowledge and state the facts are true, correct, not misleading. I retrieved the attached two pages of the Dun and Brad, Bradness, Brad Street business background report regarding the for-profit corporation status of the judiciary courts of the state of Texas from the Dun and Brad Street internet website, and it's Exhibit A, and this is it. And let's look in a little closer. And this is uh, 
Exhibit A, and uh, this is Judiciary Courts of the State of Texas, and this is subsidiary of State of Texas, of Texas State of, uh, um, and it was started in 1845, and uh, it's a state court system, and it's a profit, it's a for-profit corporation, and uh, this is page two, and the business is started uh, by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, and uh, subsidiary of uh, yeah, the state of Texas, and it's a state court system, which includes the Supreme Court, a court of criminal appeals, the court, uh, 14 courts of appeals, 80 judges, district courts, 386 judges, criminal district court, 10 judges, county level court, 445 judges. Um, um, and so um, it says here at the, uh, the department, uh, um, so it's kind of hard to read some of that, 14 courts of appeal, 375 district level courts, and 420 county level courts. And um, so it's a business, it's in business to make money, and this is official uh, Liberty County records. Um, and some of this stuff is kind of hard to read. The hard copy is a lot easier to read. So if anybody wants to send me an email, I'll send you a copy. I mean, uh, this is, there's no authority for this. These people are nothing but thieves and pirates. And uh, the conclusion is that Unidroid's unconstitutional. The corporate commercial courts are unconstitutional. It's all coming from the United States, the United Nations and the bankster thieves. All prisoners are prisoners of war under Unidroid. Um, and uh, so uh, what I would suggest is, uh, is uh, there's some other videos to watch. Um, a bankrupt corporate so-called government, bankers thieves, number one and two. We're under martial law rule. Uh, um, de facto courts, bar members, uh, and bar members too. Actually, Bankster Thieves has a number three out now. Uh, Quasi-contracts in Roman civil law. United Nations clerks masquerading as judges in Canada. And uh, Canada border pigs. And there's some upcoming videos. Vatican courts. Uh, Canada's part of the United States of America. Actually, that one's out. Uh, Churchianity, the Vatican. Uh, Bankster Thieves 3 is out. Uh, United States is the, is the District of Columbia. United States citizens are District of Columbia citizens and are slave corporations. District of Columbia border pigs. Actually, it'd be U.S. border pigs. Um, that's, I'm not sure whether I'm going to call it U.S. border pigs or D.C. border pigs, but they're D.C. border pigs any way you want to look at it. Anyways, anybody has any questions, uh, I've got a couple of free groups called Administrating Your Public Servants at Yahoo and Google. Um, and uh, I would suggest you go there and uh, you can get a lot of information. You can contact me at engineerwin at gmail.com if you want to uh, uh, make a donation. I certainly could use donations. These videos are available free on YouTube. If you want to get, uh, uh, there's a bunch of them that I haven't uploaded to YouTube that you can get. You can get a complete set if you send me a donation. Again, contact me at engineerwin at gmail.com. Uh, and I'll provide you with the particulars. And I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this. And uh, I hope you have a real happy new year. And, uh, and if you like it, spread it around. Don't forget to like the video and maybe even subscribe. But, um, but spread it around, you know, share it with your friends. You know, I mean, knowledge is power. And, uh, and uh, until people become aware of what's going on, I mean, uh, nothing's going to change. The only thing that's going to change is is when people become aware of what's going on and say enough.